Hi everybody, this is Oksana. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this design. It's a bit of a variation on my kind of side swept. If you look here at the bail, you probably recognize this little side swept situation with the wires. Um, I've done kind of different uh, takes on that, but what's different about this pendant is it has this wire going all the way around the perimeter of the stone and then it ends up here in a little swirl. Um, so that's kind of the, <laughs> the design that I'm doing here. And my pendants, I'm gonna like finish it off, oxidize it, polish it and all that, and then I put it up for auction on my um, community tab in my YouTube channel. If you're not familiar with that, that's where I auction off the pendants that I make in my tutorials. And you have to be a member to participate in the auction. So I have three levels of memberships, fan, friend, and insider. And so the friend and the insider levels are the ones that can see um, the auctions happening in there and can bid on them. So if you wanna see how I made this pendant, just keep watching. So I'm going to be using 21 gauge square copper wire. You can use 20 gauge as well. If your stone is small, you should use 21 gauge. And if it's bigger, then you should use 20. Mine's kind of borderline. So I just went with the 21. And the length, let me measure it for you. So I have three wires that are 13 inches long so 33 um, centimeters and then for my connecting wire for my half round wire I have some 24 gauge copper half round wire and all my wires from riograndecom and so this first portion that seems to be very similar in all the videos where I just connect the three wires together is actually different in this one so what you want to do is leave yourself a nice long end just several inches like four inches or something um, still here in the middle though and we're gonna oops keep this half round side down mine just got a little twisted so we're gonna keep it half round side down and we're gonna wrap it around so I have to wrap it by twisting it because this is connected to the spool. So I'm just turning this and I'm guiding the wire. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you want to do this just for a little bit to make a nice strong connection. So I'm just going to do this for a little bit just until it's like a centimeter long or something. Let's see. Maybe like... 10 wraps or about 10 wraps. So after a little bit, you're gonna stop. You're gonna give yourself another long end here. So I'm just grabbing my um, wire cutters here. I'm trimming that off. So this is what I have. And now with my pliers, I'm just squishing that down like this. So it's nice and flat, but I'm leaving these long wire pieces. So with the wire pieces pointing towards you, um, you want to bend this up, or I guess another way to do it is point them away from you and bend it down. But the point of this is to make a nice kind of rounded shape here for our cabochon to sit in, because um, the way you want to do it is you want the cabochon to sit in it like this and mine is you know an oval one so it's rounded on the bottom you could do um, other shapes but I think the oval is the easiest so mine is actually pretty much exactly an inch look at that so like 25 millimeters so what we're gonna do is these wires are kind of in the way but you just have to deal with them you can bend them a little bit out of the way that's okay we'll just put them back after and we're bending the frame so you could just put this down on like a flat surface and bend the frame around your stone so with that little wrap centered on the bottom 
and you want the wires to come together. Um, you will have a gap here on the top, but try not to make the gap too big. Try to make it kind of a small gap here. So I'm bending my wires here to try to get them to come together nicely like this. And then with your pliers, if you need to kind of go over and reinforce any of those bends, so it's just like a nicer, sharper, stronger bend there, you can do that. But the goal is just to have it all kind of nice and centered and have this nice frame. Um, so now, so actually, um, I should tell you this, one of the wires, so we're just gonna do this wire here on the right side. We're gonna do something else with. I find that it's really difficult, like if we had separated this out and then tried to bend the frame, I find that it's difficult to do that. I think it's easier to bend the frame and then just take this wire and move it to the side. Of course, we do have a little bend in the wire now that we're gonna have to like unbend, but I still think that it's easier to do just the whole frame and then move the wire. But you do have that choice um, of just putting this wire to the side and then bending your frame. It's up to you. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna connect these together. And it's a little different because it doesn't line up perfectly because you have three wires on one side, but on the other side, you only have two wires. And because of that, there's just like a wire kind of poking out either the back or the front. And that's okay. Um, I prefer to have that be on the back. And just we're gonna wrap around to make the connection around these so just like this and then I'm just gonna grab my pliers and just pull that inwards this is just how I like to finish my wire end I like to just pull it in here and then trim that off but it's up to you. There's different ways to finish it. That's just the easiest for me. So then we're gonna take, um, so one of the reasons that it's good to have it lined up so that that extra wire, here maybe you can see what I mean. See how we have extra wire here because this is two and this has three. So it's kind of sticking up here on the back. You can see it here. And then the rest are kind of lined up. So. It's good to have it on the back because here on the front, we're gonna wanna take the front two wires for a bail. So it's good to have them lined up together. Oops, wrong way. All right, so now we're just gonna wrap our bail. So around those front two wires, just gonna guide my half round wire around and around until it's the desired length of the bale that you wanna make. So after you have done this for a bit, and this is gonna be long enough to bend into a bale, you just wanna go over it and squish it all down with your pliers and have the wire end, so I trimmed it so the wire end is here on this side, so in the back, because this is the front. So the front has, let me put these back, these two wires coming out here, um, as well as this side wire. So one option you have is to leave it as it is or to give it a nice twist. So I'm gonna go ahead and twist it because I think that looks pretty. So I'm just holding the wire still with my pliers and I'm twisting the pendant. And because it's square, it's giving it that nice kind of look to it. All right, so now, if I take my stone and I kind of pop it in there, what you want to do is to guide this wire 
um, just right up the edge of your stone. So I'm just going to push my bale back because I want this to be in the front. So I'm just going to keep guiding it right around the edge of my stone. And then when I get here to the top, I'm going to bend it and just kind of round it using my fingers to make that kind of rounded shape, rounded edge there. So it's following the shape of my stone. And now as I get to the other side, so it's important to hold it because if I let it go, it starts to kind of spring back in this direction and I don't want that to, um, I don't want it to end up being like this big loose oval. I want it to be nice and tight. So just keeping it really nice and tight and going around the edge of my stone here, just like this. And what I want to do now is I'm going to pop my stone out. And with these wires that we left, I'm just going to wrap them around these three wires here that we have, as well as that new wire that just got added. So I'm going to wrap it around three times. That should be adequate. So you can see those little wraps forming as I do that. And then I'm just pressing down on it. So that's okay that they separated. We're going to just push them all nice and close together. And then as I trim this, I'm going to have the little end go right in there, just right inside, like that. And same thing here on this side. So the wire is going this way, so we're just going to kind of follow the direction the wire is naturally going in. Then it's going to go in the whole um, through the frame. So here it is here. So now it's going around five total wires because we have this wire here as well as here, the twisted wire, you can see that. And then, so that's actually one wrap. And Keeping it nice and tight. Two. And this is going to be three. So we're just going to trim and take that little end, tuck it in there into the frame, and just squish this whole thing that we just did. So up close, it looks like this. And then from the front, you can see those. I know the little circle is kind of moved here, but we're going to line it up properly. So what we want to do now is to prevent this oval from kind of moving up here, we're going to connect it on the sides. Uh, but first I'm just going to trim this wire because it's kind of in the way and it's long and so I'm going to leave myself a little end here so you can see that the end is from this wrap kind of going up to um, where I stopped with the um, twist of the wire because I'm going to make a little loop like a little swirl with this to finish it off so it's not pokey but First, I'm going to connect this oval so it's not all lopsided like it is now. So what you're going to do is take your half round wire and I'm just going to do three wraps on each edge of the oval. And then I'm just going to trim 
so that the little wire ends are inside of the frame. And I'm just going to press down on it and press those little wire ends down. There we go. So now it's connected here on this edge. And actually, theoretically, you don't even have to connect this other edge because now it's st staying pretty still. So now we're going to finish this little end here. So I'm just going to grab my round nose pliers. And um, when I make my swirls, I like to squish the end of the wire flat. It's up to you, however you make your swirls, whatever kind of works for you. But I'm just going to make my little swirl here. And I like to just press on it a little bit with my pliers just to kind of flatten it. And now we can put our stone in. And from the front, it's staying in because the little oval shape is slightly smaller than a stone itself. Plus, we have the swirl holding it so it doesn't pop out. Um, but if yours is popping out, you can do the typical, you know, where you put your pliers in, in here and bend this front wire, put a little angle in it. But chances are, unless you've made the, the oval really big, is um, it'll just stay in naturally on its own. So here on the back, on one side, we just have this little bit it's connected here, so you can really just kind of make, make a little bend here. But on the other side, that should be easier because you have this whole wire. So I'm just going to put a nice bend into there. So the back of the stone is secure and the front of the stone is secured, so we just have to finish now our bale as well as these wires here. Oh, so I am just gonna show you though, if, um, if you needed to bend this wire onto the stone, you just wedge your pliers in here and you do like a little bend like that. All right, and then here should be fine because you got the swirl kind of holding it in place, so that should be okay. All right, so since we have two wires here on one side and then one wire on the other side, because we used one of the wires, you know, for this, it's not gonna be two and two anymore. Um, you just wanna kind of bend them to their respective sides and then we're gonna make our bale. We're just gonna continue bending this and put the ends of the bale through that little gap there. So you, that's why you needed a little gap, but I think it looks better if it's just a small little gap like I tried to do here. And so we're just putting that through, kind of squishing it a little bit. So we got our nice bale shape. And then I am just going to take the left wire. I'm going to bend it towards the back and trim it. This is going to be kind of similar to that side swept top that I do. It's just slightly different because we've got a different number of wires to work with here than we normally do. And I'm just going to trim this. So the wire end is just in there. It'll get covered up though, so that's okay. I am just making sure my bale is not crooked. And so I'm gonna take these wires, I'm gonna bend it to the side and just put a nice curve into it. And I'm gonna bend it towards the back and then the other wire, I'm just gonna follow along, bending it to the side, putting a curve in it, and bending it towards the back. And here on the back, I'm just gonna trim those off and tuck away the wire ends, just tucking them into the 
frame and kind of one at a time I'm gonna try and press them down in there all right so those are all tucked away here's what it looks like from the front so you could twist this wire if you wanted to since we've got the other wire that's twisted or you can leave it as it is or you can put little beads on it or you can wrap some half round wire around it for um, that kind of effect but I'm just bending it and having it go across this way bringing it to the back like this and trimming that and just tucking away that little wire end in there and then from the front just if you can see that wire end I'm just trying to kind of push it up in there so you can't see it from the front so here is our finished pendant and it's just a little bit different of a look with this kind of wire going around it could have made our little gap even smaller I suppose because really you just need it big enough so that you can finish off these wire ends but yeah I think it looks good when it's small so that's it that's this little pendant and I hope you enjoyed thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye